Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez, and welcome to part six in our Scanda 3D part design series. Now we've already talked about a lot of aspects of Scanda 3D, and we haven't really gotten into part design just yet, but we're getting there very soon. We've looked at how to manipulate your mesh, how to clean it up, smooth it off. We've looked at different things that you can do with the mesh, such as moving them around, doing an offset mesh. And then we looked at the curve wizard to create curves that intersect your mesh and the surface creation wizard. Now we've done both the automatic surfaces and the guided creation. And what we're looking at here on the screen is the result of the guided creation. Now it doesn't look like much, but with a little bit of work, we can get some usable surfaces out of this. And I've already gone through this to show you the end result. You can see that there are still some problems here and there are some things that can change, but the end result is nice and clean. We have you know a couple big surfaces and then blended edges and so on. Now if we go back to the automatic created surfaces, you remember that it was created with a bunch of patches. So if we look at this, this could produce some problems down the road depending on what you want to use the surfaces for. So let's go back to our guided creation surfaces and take a look at how we can start to modify these. Now there are a lot of surfaces here that we possibly won't use. For instance, the blends going between these two red surfaces here this purple surface which is realistically the blend between this red one and this green one and then we have some small surfaces here these yellow surfaces which are essentially the blends between purple gray and green now I create these surfaces using the guided method to have them as a reference here just so I know where things kind of intersect but I'm gonna do a lot of manual work a lot of manual manipulation to get back to basically what I think the design intent from the original part that was scanned you know however long ago that original part that was scanned I'm gonna to try to get back to the design intent because when you scan these parts especially when you scan curved parts and parts that have texture and surface finish, you're going to lose a little bit of information. So it's always important that you understand the design intent behind it, and then you can make these on-the-fly design changes to help with the end product. So let's get started by showing the 3D sketch we created using the Curve Creation Wizard. Now I'm going to use this and a sketch on my front plane to trim the end of a few of these surfaces. Now I'm going to start by using the Spline tool and I'm simply going to grab a lot of these spline points that were used during the creation in the curve wizard. Now this is not my ideal method for creating a spline, but because all these points are here and they're so close together, this will give us a good representation for the end of the surface. Now we're not really going to use any of the surface information that's real close to the edge. That's kind of understood that that information is essentially trash and we're just using it to replicate the original geometry. If for some reason you're going through these processes, you're using the mesh information, the mesh data, and you're creating surfaces and you need to use all the way out to these corners, it's going to be a very bad idea because the amount of information there, it tends to get fuzzy and that's not really the best way to describe it, but the information that you get isn't the best information. So let's go ahead and take this sketch using our trim tool let's start to remove some material. So I'm going to cut everything away from all the surfaces on this end. That way we have a good starting point for the rest of our surfaces. Now note that we will have to trim the rest of these as well and we'll do that in different operations further down the road. But for right now I want to focus on creating this pocket geometry. So there's several things that are going on here. Let's rotate this around and see if we can get a good understanding of what's going on. The two red surfaces are the sidewalls of our pocket and they blend together with the gray surface. The pink surface is the blend that goes between the green and the red. So all these surfaces interact with each other and they can be used in order to create the geometry we need. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the trim operation. And I'm going to take this pink surface and I'm going to trim away the material from the green surface. This opens up the inside of the green pocket and that way we're not obstructing the view of anything we need here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pink surface and I'm going to remove the material from my red surfaces and the bottom gray pocket. Then I'm going to hide the pink surface. So there are going to be a lot of surfaces that I don't use and as I already mentioned that but they need to be in here so we can trim or we can really see where intersections lie. So one thing you'll notice if we view this from the front is that 
the curvature of this gray piece and where everything starts to get trimmed, it doesn't necessarily line up where we think it should or where we think it would. So it gets a little fuzzy, gets a little messy around the edges where the overlaps are. So what this tells me and how I kind of interpret this information, it tells me that I'm gonna to need to manually create this blend. The blend that is created here isn't gonna be ideal for replicating these surfaces. So what I'm gonna do is hide that. And in this case, you can see that we don't even have all the appropriate information in the back. So what I wanna do is take a look at where these surfaces intersect. So the small gray surface, I wanna see where they intersect and where I can trim these red surfaces. So again, on the front plane, I'm gonna go ahead and start a new sketch. Now in this case, you can see that it kind of wavers in and out, but what I wanna do is I'm gonna use straight lines. So I'm gonna draw a straight line here. And in this case, I wanna create another line that's parallel to that. So I'm gonna draw another line and I'm gonna add a parallel relation. And then I wanna drag these lines around until I get roughly about where I wanna trim these surfaces. So it's important to note, especially with this line here, that this red segment kind of bleeds over past that straight line, and then the gray segment bleeds over onto the left-hand side. So we could be producing some issues later down the road, but I think in this case, we're really looking at scan data, scan geometry, that possibly came in a little funny, or maybe when we did our smoothing operation, we removed some important information. So now we can take that sketch we created and we can trim the inside of both of those red surfaces and again hide that gray surface. Now you can see when we did that there's some underlying material that's left so we can go back into our surface trim and just make sure that we grab all those small pieces make sure that we don't leave any of this information behind. Alright so now we have the red surfaces and we want to blend those together. So to do this I'm going to create a boundary surface going from one side to the other and in this case I'm going to say equal curvature to face and see what that gives me because in most cases the equal curvature is going to give you a much better relation. So let's go ahead and say OK and let's turn on the gray surface again. So you can see that the gray surface and this new surface that we created are fairly close together but they're not perfect everywhere. So in order to evaluate how close we really are, I'm gonna right click on the mesh and I'm gonna show it. So there are several things that you can do, several tools that you can really take a look at this, but the one on your scan of 3D, the deviation analysis is gonna be the best. So in this case, I can select our mesh and then I can select an individual surface. So for instance, this boundary surface, and then I can calculate the deviation between the two. So you can see here there is a max deviation of 0.325 inches. So that's quite a bit of deviation on the back. But we really want to look at the overall spectrum of this. We can see that we have a few places where we have this max deviation. And then the minimum is minus 0.13, so in the other direction. So let's rotate this around, see if we can get the leaders on our max deviation here. All right, so we're looking at a lot of deviation in a few areas. So what we need to do is reevaluate this particular surface. So we're gonna go back into our boundary surface tool and we're gonna reduce this from 1.0 down to 0.5 and then take another look at how they interact. So we get a little bit better result, but as you can see that we still have some marbling and we still have some areas in this red that show some differences between the two. I think for now, this is gonna be a good result, so I'm gonna go ahead and hide the mesh again, and I wanna take a look at the end of this surface right here. So we need to have a little bit more information here. So what I wanna do is extend that, and then I'm gonna knit all three of these together. So now that they're all knitted together, I'm gonna to start a new sketch on my front plane, and then I want to bring this geometry in so I can trim this information here. So again, I'm gonna use a spline and I wanna make sure that I snap to these endpoints and then I need to add my relations. I need to make sure that I at least have a tangency here. Now, a lot of times you can see that we're gonna get an error. It's saying that we've actually overdefined this. A good way around this is to come in and use our convert entities and actually bring in the information from that edge into our sketch. Then we can come in here and we can add that tangent relation. 
Now the end goal here is to make sure that the end of the surface has a really nice offset from the cutaway in our green surface here. So we can now use this information, we can trim the end of that extended surface. Let's go ahead and save this file. And I'm going to go ahead and just add a number two after it. So that way I always have that original file to go back to if I decide that these operations aren't going well and I don't really want to roll the tree back and delete all that information. So let's try to create a boundary surface. We want to go from the opening in our green surface and in this case I'm going to have to right click and do selection manager and go down to the opening in our red surface. So you can see that we're creating a surface between the two and I want to make sure that I have curvature to face between all these. Now depending on the offset between your surfaces this may or may not produce a problem. So everything looks fairly smooth you can see that it's actually bumping up a good bit so in this case I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reduce the weight of this, the weight of the equal curvature relation, down to 0.5. Let's say OK. All right, so now we've created a boundary surface between all our surfaces here. We can use our knit tool. We have surface trim 5. Let's go ahead and expand these. We have our boundary surface we just created and surface trim 2. So now that we can knit all three together, I'm going to go ahead and change this to real view graphics and try to get an idea of the surfaces we just created. So you can see we may or may not be accurately representing this area. We may have a small issue in the surfaces right here and that's something that we can always come back and we can address a little bit later. We just want to make some progress with the rest of the surfaces and do a deviation analysis and see how everything falls in line. So as you can see, it takes a good bit of work. It takes a little bit of time in order to replicate these surfaces. And really understanding the design intent and the original geometry is very important. Now, we can carry on with this, and, and we can do all the operations. And I'm going to do that in the next video. So you guys can choose to watch part 7 if you want and follow along with the rest of this information. Or if you feel like you have a good understanding of the processes that we're using here, then you guys can just you can skip ahead and then follow on with the design of the part. As always, if you guys have any questions, please email SolidWorks support at mlc-cad.com, and we'll see you next time.